Praise the Lord. <clears throat> it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always good to come and praise God. And we, as we look at the Easter uh, Sunday, the one thing about that is we realize for us it's a resurrection day. It's a day that Jesus changed everything. The fact that he rose today makes so much difference in your life. <clears throat> resurrection, we think about the act or fact of bringing someone back to life. Yeah. And, we, and that made all the difference. Because yeah. you'd have religious leaders that have died in the past, but they didn't rise again. Right. That makes everything different. Yeah. Because that's what we like Jesus to do in our life, to cause us to rise again, yeah. to be resurrected. Because sometimes in life, things are going bad and it looks like there's no hope. But there's always hope in Christ. Yeah. There's always hope in Him. Uh, this, this song, one of my favorite songs, and I, I, I've been driving a truck since 1976, and sometimes you get out in that solitude and so quiet, and, and I catch some Christian radio. Uh, sometimes you go through different areas, and this song just kind of basically came out of nowhere. Dallas Home and Praise sang this song, Rise Again, yeah. and I just, that, that just, and when I when, uh, was asked to do this, I thought, man, that song just fits today. <laughs> It absolutely fit because it makes a difference. I want to share uh, a few of the, the verses here. And it, the song title is Rise Again. And think about what Jesus did for you. Think about the cross. We've all saw the, the horribleness of the crucifixion. But he was the Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. He was the supreme sacrifice. Now, we, we often think about where was the victory actually won? Was it on the cross or was it before the cross? we got to go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. That's where the victory was won. That's where the battle, when he surrendered, not my will, but yours. That's where the victory was won. When he decided, you know, he, Father, if there's any other way, is there any other way I could do this? Because think about this. Think about every sin was getting ready to get dumped on him. I always say this a lot when, when, I, when I preach. It's about taking a perfectly white cloth and dumping it in a vat of oil. You know, there's no way to ever get that clean again. There's absolutely no way. And Jesus was sinless. And think about him being dumped in there. But you know what? He said, Father, there's any other way. Let this cup pass by me. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will. Yeah. That's where the victory is won. It's the same thing in our own life. Yes. It's the same thing. When we have that struggle, you can never go wrong when you choose God's way. Right. You can never go wrong. Right. Hallelujah. You're going to get fired up here this morning. <laughs> Let me tell you. Because Jesus is worth it. Right? Jesus is worth it. Jesus is worth it. i got to share this because this is in the news. See, people can never convince me there's not a God. You know that, that little boy that got out of the daycare downtown, two years old? Now, how did that kid survive? You've been downtown Des Moines. How much traffic, truck traffic, construction? Who watched over that two-year-old? Who watched over that? Oh, I, he, he just found his way and he, he knew to stay on the sidewalk. But God watched over him because God had a plan for that two-year-old's life. Let me tell you, I've seen that so many times. We used to drive a child, I worked for D Magnet, driving up down uh, 14th down there, and it was this young man who was stumbling. I think he was drunk already. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning, and he was stumbling down the sidewalk, walking down 14th, and we're driving a truck down through there. And let me tell you, one step out of 14th, he was gone. Now, I know I get pretty excited when, when, I, when I see stuff. I'm thinking, God, that's not the plan for that man's life. That is not it for him to be drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning and make one step and he's gone. Right, right. You know, no, you got a better plan for his life. Right. Yeah. And God can cause us to rise again. Yeah. 
That's what that young man needed. He needed a fresh touch from the Lord to say, hey, wait, wait a minute. This is how much I love you. I was willing to go to the cross for you. That's how it works. That's how it works. Hallelujah. Rise again. Go ahead. Drive the nails in my hands. Just get, get an impression of the cross right here. Go ahead. Drive the nails in my hands. Laugh at me where you stand. Go ahead and say it isn't me. The day will come when you will see. Because I'll rise again. Hallelujah. Ain't no power on earth can tie me down. Hallelujah. Yes, I'll rise again. Hallelujah. Death can't keep me in the ground. Hallelujah. Death cannot keep me in the ground. Oh, we, we got rid of them now. Uh, no, wait a minute. The third day is coming. The third day is coming. No, we think we buried him now. He said, it took, no, the third day is coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Mark my name. My love for you is still the same. Hallelujah. Go ahead and bury me. But very soon I will be free. Because I'll rise again. Ain't no power on earth can tie me down. Yes, I'll rise again. Because death can't keep me in the ground. Hallelujah. Go ahead and say I'm dead and gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you will see that you are wrong. Go ahead and try to hide the sun, but all will see that I'm the one. Because I'll come again. Think about that. Ain't no power on earth can keep me back. Because there's going to be a day, yes, I'll come again to take my people back. Now think about that. Think about that. When everything looked like it was hopeless, you know, and, and he's on the cross. And they, you know, they were still mocking him. That's always gets me, you know. And, and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you come off the cross, now we'll believe you. Now we'll believe you. He said, you don't have to worry about it. Because you know what? It, it was already ordained that Jesus knew he was the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. And he was going to rise. As we kept telling them, guys, he was going to rise. And he rose again. And he rose again for us. Because now he was a supreme sacrifice for us. Think about that. What Jesus did for you. Hallelujah. I, I want to go to uh, quickly John, John uh, chapter 11. This is Lazarus. And I'm thinking about one thing. That we know the story of Lazarus, Martha and Mary. And that Lazarus was dead. Okay. And we know that we know the whole story. And... And, and now it's been four days. We know that time has passed. And Jesus was, he was, he was closer. He's only two miles away. And the average walking distance at that time, they could walk about 20 miles a day. And, and, and we look here. And they tell, I'm going to go to verse 14. It's chapter 11 of John. This is the Amplified. And, and after Jesus told them they was dead. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And this is verse 14. And this, is, this was always an interesting statement. And Jesus is talking, and for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there. That, that'd be hard one to understand, okay? But God had other plans. See, that, that's where we kind of get, get off. Because it looks bad, but you know, God's still there. See, I never, ever have gotten a vision of God when, when He's high and lifted up, like, like it is in Isaiah. He's high and lifted up. I never get any picture that God's worried up there, right? I never get a picture of that. They're running around, Jesus, and hey man, we got to figure out what we're going to do down there. Let's have a cabinet meeting up here and try to sort it out. I never get that. But God is holy. What I do is get that majestic view of God that, you know, like we say in the modern terms, I got this. And that's what God is saying in your life. I got this. All you want to do is just believe me. That if you, if you look at Jesus as he walked along the earth, that's what he said. So if they just believe me, you know, I, I am God, and his, his favorite term, he liked to be called son of man. Because then he can identify with man, but he was every bit God. Yeah. And that's what we got to always remember. God knows what you're going through. Yeah. Now, Martha and Mary, they, they were so worried about this. Yeah. And verse 15, for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there. And it will help you to believe, to trust, and rely on me. That's what God wanted to do. You know, you don't get one thing. And then when he came, and he, and he was already, uh, Lazarus was already dead, and, and, and Bethany was near Jerusalem, and this is verse 13, about two miles away. And, and when he comes there, he start, Martha runs out to meet him. 
And it's interesting. And a considerable number of the Jews, verse 19, had gone out to see Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Master, and this, this is just a cry. This is, these, are, these are real people. And, they, and, and their hearts just like real people would say this. And, and, and Martha, one thing about it, he, she decides the way she felt. She, she said, then she said, I heard that Jesus would come to, went to meet him while Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. See, you took too long to get here. If you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. See, she understood that Jesus could do something in this situation. And that's the way we look sometimes. Oh, man, I wish, God, you, you're, you're late this time. Yeah. No. no. No, I'm not late. God's never late, is he? He's never late. Oh, man. It's getting good. Dear. It's getting good. I'm saying, because this is so powerful. Okay? But Martha understood this, verse 22. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, he will grant it to you. And Jesus said to her. Now, I love the way Jesus' tone is. He didn't say, well, why don't you just believe this, you know? What is wrong? With you? He didn't say that. You can, you can say, you know, her, his response was just so kind back to her. You know what? Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. Yes. Just, just remember that. Yes. Jesus is the word. Mm -hmm. His words matter. Mm -hmm. His words are fact. His word, the Bible says, it's ever settled in heaven. His words are settled. Yes. Look what he said. Your brother shall rise again. Martha replied, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Look at Jesus' response. I love this. Because this, this sets the tone right here. Jesus said to her, I am, Amplified Version said, I am myself the resurrection and the life. Yes. Whoever believes in, adheres to, yes. trusts in, and relies on me, yes. although he may die, yet he shall live. Yes. That's the key right there. That's the key right there. Yeah, he deserves a hand clap. That's the key right there. Because he is the resurrection. That's why it didn't make any difference if it was four days or 400 years. Because Jesus says, I am the resurrection. That's why it didn't make any difference. You know, and in and, and Revelation, verse 1 through 8, New International Verses, Jesus says, I am the living one. I was dead. So they can't argue. This is out of Jesus' own mouth. So he's the one that says, yeah, I did die on the cross. I was dead, past tense. Hallelujah. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I hold the keys of death and haste. That's what we always got to remember. Yes. We always got to remember, Jesus always alive, always been alive, and they couldn't hold him in the ground. Right. He rose. They came to the tomb. What happened? The stone was rolled away. Where'd he go? He's right. Why are you looking? And he said, why are you looking here? He's already risen. Yeah. That's the thing. And you got to let him rise in your life. Yeah. That's the difference. That makes a difference in your whole life. It's not just a resurrection day for one. It's a resurrection for many. Yeah. Because when we accept him, our life, we might be, our lives might, Jesus describes in Isaiah, because he read it in Luke, that, you know, he's going to give us beauty for ashes. Yeah. Where we're getting resurrected out of that. We look like, it looked like there's no hope. Right. Look like there's no way. And I often say this. People say, oh, tell, I don't know which way to go. You know, and I said, don't worry about it. You know why? Because she says, I am yes. the way, yes. the truth, yes. and the life. Amen. You know, and Jesus said, because I live, yes. hallelujah, I live, you should live also. Yes. And that's not just existing. That means living. Yes. That's a big difference. Yes. Not just that we're just on a even place. No, we're living. Because I can't stress this enough. God has a plan for everybody's life. Yes. Nobody's born in vain. Right. Right. That's what I often say. You should never tell somebody they'll never amount to nothing. Then you're trying to act like God. How do you know what God has planned for their life? Right. It's always a plan for good. Right. To give you a future and a hope, says yes. Jeremiah. Yes. Let's never forget that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. I know one thing today, this morning. We're going to come to celebrate the resurrection. Yes. We're come here to celebrate how good God is yes. in your life. Yes. When, when you thought your life wouldn't turn around, Jesus says, no. There's always hope in me. Right. 
Because the Bible said, is there anything too hard for God? You know? There's nothing. Think about that. The one that set the stars in most that you stay here, you stay here. I tell you what, he can take care of you. Yes. That's all he wants to do. And you ever notice how Jesus died? He died how? On the cross with his arms out like this. What does that say? Well, yep. come here, right here. Yep. Are you going to accept what I did on the cross? Right. He don't force you to accept it. But it will make a difference in your life when you accept Jesus Christ. Yes. It will make the difference. Yes. Because I'm telling you what, God always works from the inside out. Yep. That's why sometimes social programs don't work. They're good to have them, but they got to start here. Yes. The change has got to start inside of them. Yes. And realize that, hey, wait a minute. I need to be a new creature in Christ. Yes. That's where it starts. It starts with that resurrection power and say, hey, what? I surrender all. Yes. Like a preacher once said, Tim, do not sing that song unless you really mean it. When you say, have thine own way, Lord, mean it. Right. I surrender all. Mean that. Because God knows whether your heart's legitimate or not. Right. And he's saying today, you know what? I love you. Yes. I love you. I was willing to go to the cross. Right. He was obedient even to the death of the cross for you. Right. So this morning, we're going to take the time and praise God. Yes. And we're going to open this for testimonies. Because yes. we all got a testimony. One preacher said, you can't have a testimony without a test. And think about what you've come through. Yeah. You know, I, I, was, I was talking to a friend of mine. He asked me where I graduated from. I said I was a valedictorian of my class. That's pretty good. Magna cum laude, that's pretty good. Where'd you graduate from? I said the school of hard knocks. That's where I graduated from. <laughs> but I'm still going. I'm still going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to open this up this morning. Praise the Lord. Yes, thank you, Max. Yes. And he endured torture and suffering yes. and died a horrendous death yeah. for us. And the video really what struck me the most was his mother watching him endure this. Oh. She knew who he was the whole time. And she watched him be obedient. She probably didn't understand. Right. She knew the plans for him, she knew who he was, but she didn't understand all of it. And after he died.
Yeah, that's good. Just to go along with what you're saying about a year ago, I did painting with lettering on it, and I hung it up in uh, one of our spare bedrooms, and it says, your life is a ministry, whether yes. you realize it or not. <clears throat> That's right. Amen. That's right. And that, that is so true. Because people do, what whether we like or not, come with, they do watch it. Yeah. They, they do see, are you real or not? Because people, people can identify with somebody that's real. That's why they was always attracted to Jesus, you know, because he, he would deal with all different kinds of people, rich, poor, and everything. But he had so much compassion and understanding. People understand if you really care about them. They want to know that. You know, I, <clears throat> I remember being out in Philadelphia, and I was walking down the street, and there was a big, it was a big Catholic church, St. Paul Catholic Church. It was on the corner, and I had to wait for the light. And, and this, this wasn't 100% scriptural how they had to cross, but I thought the meaning was just exactly right. They had Jesus on, it, it was a crucifix on top of the building. And it had Jesus had one hand up here like this. And the other hand was down here like this and it had a dove. And he was offering it to you. I, I thought that was just a great picture. Because here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm offering you. Do you want to take it? Do you want my peace? Do you want my love? That's what he wants so much. You know, and I, I think about the sacrifice. The Bible talks, God was pleased to bruise him for our sins. That's what, you think about that. You, you think about when uh, Abraham had to take Isaac and sacrifice him, you know. And, and Isaac was willing to be, he was a willing sacrifice. He said, you know, hey, we, we got the wood, we got the fire, but there's something missing. You know, where, where's the lamb at? And, he, and he's tying, you know, he's tying him up. And, and, and I'm thinking that would probably be a strange situation. Dad, what is going on here? You know, but Abraham's smart. God by himself. Land. Right. So, and, and think about that. And I'm thinking, well, I wonder what Father God, one day, there's not going to be a ram. They did provide a ram. God provided a, a ram was in the thicket. But one day, there wasn't going to be a ram in the thicket because his son was going to have to go to the cross. And he was willing to do it for us. Right. And to think about that. When John said, John the Baptist, here's the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. Think about it. All their sins are dealt with past, present, and future. And he is there to give you a future. I just, that word future keeps coming up today. Somebody needs to hear that. But you have a future in Christ. Right. Wherever you are in your life, God has not given up on you. Right. You know, he loves you with an everlasting love. Right. Never forget that. Yeah. He promised to never leave you or forsake you. Right. Psalms 37, 25 is my life verse. Yeah. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or right. seed begging bread. Right. Hallelujah. Let's never forget that. But God is for you. Hallelujah. Yes. Someone just go first. Um, I'll just spin off that. There's just been a lot going on in my life to where it's, it's just one thing after another, it seems, and I know it's with everybody, but God wants us to remember when he said it was finished, it is finished. Hallelujah. He we were introduced to a song in South Carolina, and it said, He is the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the God of the breakthrough when we worship, when we dance. He our breakthrough in our heart, our health, our prosperity. Yes. And if we can't put full trust in Him, He wants a relationship yes. with you. Oh. He created you. To carry out, and we're hearing it, to carry out his agenda, not our own. That's right. But his. And when we step back and we let him be the break, he broke through death. Hallelujah. He broke through death. On this day, we celebrate him breaking through death. And I just want to encourage everybody because the minute I give it up, the minute I step back and let him do the thing, he does it. I mean, it's not something that should be like a miracle like Ethan said. This should be natural law. That's right. For us. For us. Amen. For us. The devil's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. Yes. So I just want to encourage you guys. Let him be your breakthrough in everything. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So true. Yes. These are my grandkids. 
mentality. Yeah. As much as I love them, I have told each and every one of them, they have to find yes. that relationship with Jesus for themselves. Hallelujah. I tell them stories about what happened to me, but yes. I'll say this to all the young people and the old people if they've never done it. Jesus said, when you seek me, yes. all oh, yeah. your heart, I'll yes. You'll yes. find me. Yes. yes. And I tell these kids, don't take my word for it. Don't take grandma's word for it. Get on your knees alone in your bedroom, whatever. Shut the door. Yeah. Call on him. Yes. Beg him to prove himself to you. Yeah. And I promise you, he will prove himself yeah. to you. He yes. said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. And when you think, you know, they, they're faced with things that... We may have been faced with years ago, but we've learned that is this true? Yes. Right. Is he true? Right. Is he real? Is this real? And I think this is so real. This is what Jesus used to defeat uh, the devil. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. It is written. That's so right. It tells me. And one, one other thing, and I'll never forget this. At a time, a supernatural experience, and I believe we can all have supernatural experience. Yes. My mother brought forth a message. I'm not going to go into the message, but I'm going to go into I had my sister, two brothers that were all all they heard was tongues. Just da 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 da. And I understood every word. And I'll tell you what, he introduced himself just like this. This is how it started. I am he that walketh upon the water. Yes. I am he yes. that was alive or was dead. Yea, I'm alive yes. forevermore. Hallelujah. I am he yes. that healed the sick and raised the dead. And yes. you know, when he when he got done, there was no what what we who this was. Yeah. Right. It was Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. And all those years ago, I was telling him, I he left a little caveat on what he told me. If you walk in my way. Hallelujah. Now, I have not always walked in his ways, but I am still alive. Hallelujah. Yes. I believe every word he said yes. will come to pass. Yes. And I'm talking to Brother Ron this morning. I believe we are so close. we got to be. I'm 72 years old. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I could live to be, you know, 73. <laughs> but we don't know. But God knows. And but I want these kids and all the kids to know he's reachable. Yes. He's real. He's yes. tangible. He's, yes. a, he's a being like we are. And he can talk yes. to us because he became a man. Yes. Hallelujah. He's not that invisible spirit anymore. He's housed in a, in a human form that yes. we can yes. see and talk to. Amen. And he loves us so much. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 That's great. That's, that's really where you got to come to. I love the fact when the veil was rent from Jesus died, now we can go in that holy yes. of holies. You know, and our prayer don't just stop here at the ceiling. Right. They all go all the way up. Yeah. Anytime, day or night, right. you know, you can go to Him. Right. That That is such that for some people, you know, they say, well, call me anytime. They don't really mean to call you anytime yeah. as long as it doesn't disturb them. Yeah. But you can go to Jesus anytime. And the, the best thing is just talk to Jesus like your friend. Yes. If you have a concern yeah. about something, yes. you know, talk to him. I, I was the other day, I, I shared this the other night, I, I, we, we do certain back maneuvers, and one is the hardest of all of them. So, you know, and, and, and uh, I, I've done it before, and I always want to demonstrate it really good, you know. And I said, Lord, just help me. You know, and it's like the Lord saying, Tim, you can ask me that any time yeah. for me to help you because I'm here for yes. you. Yes. I'm here with you. I'm inside of you. Yes. Emmanuel, God with yes. us. And the Holy Spirit, He lives inside of us. Yes. Why wouldn't I help you? Yes. You want to help your kid. You want to help them stay on the right path. And you know, it's just like, just like you've got to get that understanding how much God loves you. Yes. How much. I, I know I shared about the prodigal son. Think about the prodigal son. That he wouldn't have known which day, the father didn't know which day he was coming home. But he was looking for him every day. Yeah. He was looking for him. How would he know which day? And yeah. then he sees that figure yeah. kind of rolled down there and kind of probably slumping. No shoes, kind of dirty. That's my son. Yeah. And he runs to him. Can yeah. you see that old man out there running to him? 
But you know, you can see the picture throwing their arms around. And his son's got this speech. I shouldn't even call your son. It's like, no, no. You know what? That doesn't matter now. You know why? Because you're home now. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Bring the fatted calf, put shoes on his foot, put ring on his finger, because he has his authority back yeah. right now. He's still my son. When he was a long way off, he was still my son. Yes. we got to always remember that. Yes. No matter how far we get away from the Lord right. and we belong, he's still coming after us. Right. You know, he still, he leave that 99 and go grab that sheep out there. Why? Because that's how much he cares for you. Yes. You've got to give a revelation of how much Jesus yes, cares for you. you. Yes. You've got to understand yes. that. He loves you that much. Yes. You know, I, I remember my kids were born. And I, I remember my, 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 my one daughter, when she was born, I was in the delivery room. And I, I remember saying this to, to hold her the first time. And I, and I remember saying and I'm looking down at this little little girl, this black hair. She's going to look, you know, and, and, and just born. And I said, how can anybody believe there's not a God? Right. Yeah. When I see this little girl. And, and I'm holding her and realizing God has a reason for this little girl right. to be born. Yeah. You know, and, and he's going he's gonna to shape her and give me the responsibility to help her. Right. And I remember she, she sent me a text one day. She says, Daddy, you know one thing I, I appreciate most about you is that you taught me about God. Right. You taught me to pray. You know, it's really interesting what she remembered most. It wasn't the things you bought for her, the hours you went to work. You know what she remembers? That you led her to God. You led her to know where she could always go and that, that this Word of God matters. She says, Daddy, I got my Bible out and I study God's Word. She understands that because once you get God's Word in your heart, that's what David said, I hid the Word in the heart but I might not sin against you. So you have that Word that makes a difference. And that's what we always got. Take time. And there's sometimes, you know, when we read the Bible and we pray, which is all good, but it's sometimes just to take a few minutes and say, God, I'm coming to you today for nothing. I'm not going to ask you for nothing. I just want to come and praise you. And thank you for all you've done. That's it. That's it. That's where we got to be sometimes. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Um, so my coworker, whose mom, who we believe has been delivered from cancer, she asked if we would pray still for her. She's got to check this week. And my boss has been having some health issues. I know that um, we need to pray for her, but I know that I need to call them both this week. Hallelujah. During the work weekend, and need to walk them through prayer directly. So they just need, they ask for prayer, and so I'm going to ask them. Okay. And that's what we're here for, yeah. right? To pray one for another. We would and, definitely and, lift and it I'm up. I'm thankful for a work environment where I'm able to actually, you know, talk to them about the work. Talk yes. to them I tell you what, the, a preacher once told me, he says, Tim, you can never talk to the wrong man about Christ. You could never, because we don't know where they're at. They might just be waiting on that. A lot of people, the reason they come, don't go to church, is nobody asking. And they would probably go if you asked them and sat with them. But you know what? I've never, in my life, the time I've been a Christian, not too many times you ever had this rejection when, when they have a request, they bring something up and say, would you pray for me? Not too many people said, no, I don't really don't appreciate it. Don't pray for me. No, it's just the opposite. You know what they say? Hey, I appreciate you praying for me. Yeah. I appreciate you taking time out of your life. Yeah. You know, because I tell you, it makes a difference when you lift them up. Because you never know if that's that person's last day. Right. Right. You never know how close they are. to yeah. it, that, that, you know, next morning might not be here. Right. So if you can tell them, you know what? Jesus lives. Right. And all he wants you to do is open that door of your heart. Yeah. And just open and let them in. And your life can change. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Let's go ahead and stand. Oh, yes, over here. Sorry, yes. No, no, no problem. No problem. Um, I think of how I was raised by a very young family. We know God. Yeah. And I think of how I was raised by a very young family. We know God. They're not raised knowing God. My mom always has told me and told me to be the only Jesus people know. That's exactly right. That just like really gets me hard. Sometimes in your school, you are not the perfect Christian. I mean, right. Jesus on 
sure, that's absolutely true. I used to haul furniture, and I'd run all over the country. And I was in Houston, Texas. And at the end of the time, I'm getting ready to load all my equipment up. You know, the family would ask me if I need anything. You know, sometimes they'd give me lunch or something like that. And I used to say, no, but if it's all right, can I pray with your family before I leave? Because I most likely won't see them again. And they had some teenage girls that were like 15, 16 years old. And the mom was there, and she said, well, I've never prayed with my kids before. And I'm thinking, wow, they're 15, 16 years old, and you have never prayed with them? And I thought, wow, there's, you know, but we're going to pray right now. Yeah. And I thought, they grew up all that time and yeah. didn't see you pray for them, you know? Well, let's start a new, yeah. let's start something new. Yeah. And we, we just got in a big circle and we prayed. And I hope that got them going because they need that. Yeah. You know, everybody's going through something, and they might not share what's going on in their heart. But if you could put them on that right road, that right road where they follow Jesus, I tell you what, those songs that we sang, we talked about it before, the ones we sang in Sunday school, Jesus loves me, this I know. Let me tell you what, man, you share that with them, or you go to bed, and, and you pray by their bedside, I tell you what, them kids will remember that. Yeah. They'll remember that, you know what, Jesus loves you. Jesus yeah. loves you. I tell you what, when they get in trouble, when things going around their head, hey, I remember that song. Yeah. Jesus, they, my mom said, Jesus loves me. Yeah. Jesus, do you love me? Do you yeah. love me? Yes. The answer is always going to come back, yes. yes. I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and stand, please. I'm going to go to prayer. Oh, hallelujah. God, you are good. Oh, Father God, uh, we need you so much. Father God, Father God, on Resurrection Sunday, Lord, we thank you that you rose for us, that you were willing to go to the cross for us. Hallelujah. That you love us so much. Because, Father God, without you, where would we be? Hallelujah. We know the Bible starts with in the beginning God. And that's what it's about. You are the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. You are the life changer. You are the life rearranger. Hallelujah. Father God, you are a provider. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. Hallelujah. Our wonderful Father, mighty counselor, mighty God. Father God, we need you every day. Lord, that we bring this request. And we thank you, Lord, that you're working in Peter's life and his work done. Lord, we thank you for the fact that friends get together and want to study the Word of God. Lord, we thank you for this film that's out there. I can only imagine, Lord, that's changing lives. Father God, we thank you for that song. We thank you, Lord. Father God, we need you every day. Father God, without you. Father God, we know the Bible says, for with God. For with God, all things are possible, God. And you are the God of miracles. Father God, we want to thank you today. We want to praise you today. Father God, we want to thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. We thank you that you rejoice over us with sins. We thank you that you forgive us of our sins. Hallelujah. And you cast them in the sea of forgetfulness. That you don't bring them, bring them back up again. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for being the Lamb of God. We thank you, Lord, for being obedient even to the death of the cross. We thank you for surrendering, hallelujah, and saying, I will, I will, nevertheless, not my will. Lord, let, let us be, that be the cry of our own hearts, that we will surrender all to you. We give our lives to you. We give our dreams, everything up to you, because we know that you'll take care of them. That we know that it's all about you, God. It's all about you. And the Bible said, if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. Let us lift you up with our lives. The way we act, the whole life, whether at home, school, play, whatever we may be, that people can see that we spent time with you. Hallelujah. It's just like, let, let us realize that we need to act like you, Lord, in all those situations. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? How would Jesus act? Lord, we know, Lord, that it's you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the fact that we can come and worship today. That we can come and spend time with you. Time with God's people. And, and, and Lord, we thank you for those testimonies that prove that you're still working. You are the I am God, the very present help in time of trouble. Lord, we thank you so much. You're such a wonderful God. Good God. 
that we love you more every day. Lord, I ask you to be with the remainder of the service. Let lives be changed so that when we leave, we won't be the same as we came in here. Paul says that I may know him. Lord, I may know you to have that deeper abiding relationship in you. And Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise you. In your wonderful holy name, we pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do our announcements. Uh, please silence your cell phones. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and be seated. Uh, still seeking media assistance. Somebody be interested in running a soundboard help and do the scriptures. And seeking Sunday school and youth group teachers. Okay. It's always helpful to have those. Okay. And it's a blessing to be able to teach. And you always want to let go and let God. Yeah. I love that. That's really good. So, uh, Brother Don and Eric, would y'all come and take the offering, please? Okay. Brother Eric, would you be so kind and pray, please? Thank you. Father, we are so blessed and thankful for this day. Let's go to Sunday. Because, Lord, we do have victory. We are so thankful. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let's all lift our hands to the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for that ultimate sacrifice. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you became sin. That we might become the righteousness of God in you. Simply by believing, Lord, in what you have done. We have been adopted into the family of God. Hallelujah. Into the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. And it's nothing we've done, nothing we can do, but simply what you have done. The finished work of the cross has made eternal life available to each and every one who will just simply believe in you and the one that sent you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Think, well, I don't know about this, you know, Nathan. I'm going to tell you something. There's more in heaven than floating around with a, with a harp. There is a man right now in a physical body in heaven. Hallelujah. The firstborn of many brethren. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It's awesome. I mean, it's just overwhelming when you try to get your mind around what he has done. The perfection of it. Praise God. Amen. All right. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, worship team. Great job. Amen. They're, they're working here without all the instruments. and Praise God. But they did a fantastic job, and I appreciate that very much. And I know the Lord loved every minute of it. Praise God. Amen. Thank you again. God bless all of you for being here on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We'll allow the Sunday school classes to be dismissed. Any of you that are going downstairs may do that right now. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Apparently some of them have heard me preach. They're on their way out. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. You know what? This is so weird because... This, it's April Fool's today. That's so bizarre. My grandfather actually was born on April Fool's. He really was. Imagine living with that your whole life. Praise the Lord. Amen. April Fool's. You know, the trouble is that not that there are too many fools, but that lightning isn't distributed correctly. <coughs> well, you'll get that later on, but... Uh, if you ever have to deal with fools, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good, and so uh, we're grateful, amen, for all of you that are here. And uh, I'm going to, before we get actually into the scriptures, I want to just kind of recap a few things. Uh, Wednesday night, for those of you that were here on Wednesday, we had a, like a Passover 101. <laughs> it's not the whole thing, but anyhow, I want to just kind of set some things up. First of all, the Bible, the Scripture, is totally a revelation of Jesus. That's all it's really about. I mean, there are all kinds of natural, historic facts, but they all point to Him. Mm -hmm. We're not to focus on the historical events. We're supposed to focus on the revelation that comes from those events that reveal Jesus to us. Amen? So, uh, in, in uh, the, the Feast of the... Uh, of the Lord, they're all representative of Jesus in some manner. They're all presenting Him to us in some way. Supposed to be uh, presenting Him to the Jewish people who never got it because they got so hung up in the actual traditional events and the religious ceremonies that they missed the purpose of those ceremonies. So even today we have people, and we have in the past, uh, wanted to even use the church for a uh, so they can have a Passover celebration and so on and so forth, which I'm not against that, except that the problem is when you make that the end all and the be all of what it is you're doing, you've missed the whole point of the Bible. You know, you're just going through rituals, which is what happens so often with religion in general. We get caught up in all the rules and the regulations and the rituals and the, and the, the different things that we do that we forget what they're trying to tell us is about Jesus. Amen? So... In the first, the first month in the Jewish calendar is Nisan. And that is the month that we're in right now. Obviously, Passover, is, it 
coincides with what we call Easter or Resurrection Day. But I'm going to just give you a brief kind of overview here so you can see how precise God is. And my point in this is not to tell you how, you know, how much I've you know, written down here about what I've gotten out of the Word of God. The point is to get you to understand that if you can believe, if God is so precise in the way that He does things, then you can have confidence that not only is what Jesus done for real, but He's done it for you. You're going to experience the very same thing. You don't have to have a great stretch of faith here. All you've got to do is believe what He's already done, and you can see that it's got to come to pass in your life. It has to. So, again, the Nisan is the first month in the Jewish calendar, which coincides with April and March, or March and April, in the Julian calendar or in the calendar, the, you know, what we use. Now, Passover takes place on the 14th day of Nisan. That's Passover. Now, how many of you ever thought, uh, we talked about this a little bit uh, Wednesday night, but trying to get uh, three days out of that Friday night to Sunday? It doesn't work. That's because he was crucified on Wednesday. If you look now, they, they've got, because of uh, satellite technology, they can go back and, and tell you exactly what day that certain events took place thousands of years ago. And so the truth is, on the 14th, which is always the 14th on the, on the Jewish calendar, just a question of what day that 14th falls, just like on our calendars, right? Well, it so happens that the 14th was on a Wednesday, not on a Friday. Passover took place on Wednesday. So then comes the 15th and the 16th. The 15th and the 16th is when they started celebrating unleavened bread. Okay, so that would have been Thursday and Friday. Well, he was already in the tomb on Thursday, right? Because they had to get him in there before a high feet. See, Passover was a Sabbath. The unleavened bread becomes a high Sabbath. It's another Sabbath day. So he, that's why they're saying we've got to get him off the cross before we begin this actually four or five days of feast of high Sabbaths. So they did. So the, the 15th and the 16th, He's in the ground. That's unleavened bread. That's a high Sabbath. All right. Then the 17th becomes the weekly Sabbath, but it's also the first fruits, which is the 18th, which is the day after. Now, I'm really getting you confused here, but the 17th is their normal Sabbath. It's Saturday. It's sundown Friday till sundown Saturday. Then the 18th is the beginning of the celebration of first fruits. All of these celebrations take place in this one period here, okay? So the first day of the week then is Sunday, which is the day that they would begin celebrating feast, first, first fruits, okay? So Passover, the lamb is sacrificed. The la I, he said, I, here, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus, amen? Unleavened bread tells you that you have to eat unleavened bread. Uh, leaven is a type of sin. So the unleavened bread is showing that the sin's being taken away. He's in the grave now. All right? And then it also says during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, not only do you just eat unleavened bread, you can do no work. So it's not about what you're doing. It's what about He did. He got rid of the sin, and you don't do anything except believe it. You just receive it. Okay? That's, that's the time. I am the bread of life, He said. To take away the sin of the world. Amen? And we are saved by grace, not by works. It's a gift from God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's what He did, not what we do. Amen? Now, first fruits is the celebration where they would bring the first fruits from the field of the harvest. They, they, the, the priest would wave a sheaf of grain. It was, all, there was, a, it was a, like all of their celebrations... Uh, intricate and involved and everything else. But basically, that's what it was. He brought the first fruits, waved it before the Lord. If the Lord accepted that first fruit, then He accepted the entire harvest. Everything was blessed, okay? So He brings a small portion of the crop and He, and he waves it before the Lord and it sanctifies the entire harvest. Alright? So Jesus is risen from the dead. First fruits, that's the day he rises up. It's early in the morning on the first day of the week, it says. It's still dark, but pass, or the, uh, the uh, Sabbath is over, and it's now the first day of the week, beginning of first fruits. Jesus 
is risen from the dead, and he becomes the first fruit, amen, of God. Yes. So those who are in Christ, the scripture says that uh, because of the first fruit, and then afterward, those who are Christ at his coming. Yes. Now, that's not necessarily meaning the second coming. It's saying he came, his coming, to do this, made him the first fruits, and makes us then the harvest. Not only those that were there at that time, those that had been before, those that come after. It's all the harvest of God. It's all the people of God. Amen? So, with that said, we've got Passover is the death, unleavened bread is the burial, and first fruits is the resurrection. All right? Mark chapter 16, verse 6. We've got several scriptures here at the beginning, but again, I'm still just trying to get this set up so we're all on the same page here. Praise the Lord. So Mark 16, 6, and he says, it, And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that you may bring me on... That's not the scripture I'm looking for. It's Mark 16 and verse 6. Yes, he said, then be not frightened. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. So, don't be afraid, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the one that was crucified. He's not here. He has risen. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right, John chapter 14, verses 16 through 19. John 14, 16 through 19. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Yet a little while, the world seeth me no more. Can you go on with that? I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, you shall live also. All right? Because I live, you live also. All right? Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Revelation 1, 5 through 8. It's interesting, all of the, almost everything Tim was saying was part of what I'm trying to share with you this morning, too. So praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. we got the same spirit. Praise yeah. God. <laughs> and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Praise the Lord. All right. Verses 17 and 18. Still in the first chapter. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Praise the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give... Wow. He, <laughs> he that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise... And to the angel of the church is burning right these things, saith he, the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Praise the Lord. Amen. He is the tree of life. Praise the Lord. In fact, he is everything. Praise God. Leviticus chapter 23, 5 through 14.
In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month, this is just telling you what I've already told you, okay? Just so you can see it's in the scripture. The fourteenth day of the first month is the Lord's Passover. The fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unto the Lord seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you'll have a holy convocation. You'll do no servile work therein during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But you'll offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give unto you, and you shall, re and shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. That's the first day of the week we're talking about. And you shall offer that day, that day when you wave the sheaf and the he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering therefore or thereof shall be two tenths deals of flour mingled with oil and the offering made of fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine the fourth part of a hen. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. So the point I'm trying to make is Jesus is all of this. This is what all of these things were about was God trying to reveal himself to people, amen, who had no spirit, who didn't have the spirit of God in them. So he gives them, it's just like Jesus telling parables in the New Testament. It's all these types and shadows that we've talked about, okay? So the first fruits was celebrated on the day after the Sabbath, which means it was celebrated on the first day of the week, which is the day we are here celebrating it today. Amen? By offering the first fruits, they acknowledged a total dependence on God. The purpose of the service was to consecrate the harvest to God, and the first fruits represented the whole harvest. And it was the high priest that brought it. They, they took the sheep, gave it to the priest, and he got, brought it up before the Lord. Offering the first fruits actually consecrated the entire harvest. It set it aside as though it were God's, God's crop or God's harvest. Amen? So if God accepted the first fruits of the harvest, it meant the entire harvest would be accepted by God. Now that ought to get you excited. If you understand anything about what I'm talking about, when God accepted Jesus as the sacrifice, He accepted everybody that's a part of that. Everybody that believes that is a part of that harvest, is a part of the crop. Consecrated to God. And it's not based on you. You're just, a, you're just something out there in the field. It's that first thing that He received. And because He received it, He received everything else. Praise the Lord. The entire, the, the entire harvest, then, is accepted by God. All right, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 23. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Okay? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits... Of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. He's the first fruits, everybody else, after he goes and does what he does. Amen? Yeah. All right. Jesus' resurrection marked the beginning of the harvest of souls. Amen who have been set apart for God through Jesus Christ. That's where we get the idea that it's, it's not necessarily the second coming, it was His coming, although the second coming is, a, you know, reference and appropriate. It's about His coming, period. Yeah. Had He not come, there'd be no harvest, there'd be no first fruits, and there'd be nothing else right. consecrated to God. We'd all still be in our sin. We'd all still be under Adam. We'd all still be subject, amen, to the laws of this land. Instead of the laws of heaven. Praise the Lord. All right, Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. See, this is what people got to find out. This isn't something you're doing or something you couldn't do. This is something God planned before you or any other human being ever lived a day. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, 
toward the first day of the week. Again, here we are, the day of first fruits. Came Mary Magdalene and another Mary to see the sepulcher. That's when she came to check where Jesus was. It was the first fruits, the day that first fruits begins. He's not here, right? Praise the Lord. He's, he's, he's disappeared. All right, verse 6. He's not here. The angel tells him he's not here. He's risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Amen. He said he's not here. He's gone. He's, he's out of here. Praise the Lord. All right, John chapter 20 and verse 17. Jesus saith unto her, don't touch me. You ever wonder about this? For I am not, am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus is going to present himself as the first fruits. Yes. He's got to go before the Lord. He is our high priest. Yes. He's also the first fruits. Yes. He's everything. Yes. And if you want to just get right down to it, he's the one that he's going to present himself to. Yeah. Yes. He's just in the flesh. Yes. Amen. So that's what they're talking about. He says, don't touch me yet. Because the first fruits have to be offered and accepted by God, or else there's no harvest. Nothing else is going to be consecrated. Amen? So he goes to the Lord, and Jesus presents himself as the first fruits, first fruits from the dead. Amen? He is our great high priest, amen, who offered himself in fulfillment of the feast of first fruits. So God has accepted Jesus as the first fruits from the dead. And because of that, believers are also accepted by God. Yes. Amen. Through Jesus. Because of what he did, we are accepted. Because God accepted the first fruits, he accepts the entire harvest. I mean, think about this. People are debating about what you got to do, what you don't have to do. God took care of the whole thing. That's what this is all about. That's what he's trying to tell us. You didn't do anything. You're just a plant growing in the field. But he was accepted. And because he was accepted, everything in that field, in other words, all of humanity that believe, yes. are accepted by God. Yes. They are consecrated to God. They are set apart. Yes. It's not how good you are. The truth is, whatever that first thing is, everything else in the field is the same. If you've got a corn crop and you pull one ear of corn out of there, everything else in that field is going to be corn. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's going to raise us from the dead and give us a resurrected body. He can't do anything else. No. God would be a liar and this would all be a joke. Yeah. Whatever He did for Jesus, He is obligated now. Now I know that sounds... Crass, and I don't mean, and God knows my heart. I'm just saying, he's, he's the one that said that. I'm not holding him to this. I'm just saying, he can't do anything but this. Yes. If you're a believer, write it down, mark it down. You're through dying. Yes. This flesh may go, but you're going to be resurrected and have a resurrected body and live forever just like Jesus. Yes, you can't do it. Nothing else can happen. Romans 8 and 11. I don't know about you, but this gets me excited. This is more about just roll away the stone, man. I mean, God has given us some information here that ought to just dramatically change every one of our lives. There's no more guessing. There's no more, gee, I hope it works out. I, I, I hope I'm good enough. I hope I do enough. You, it's done. Yes. You are as good as resurrected. And I'll show you what I mean by that. This didn't just happen. God's got this thing planned out. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and you know he does because if you're born again, you have this treasure in earth and vessels. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's just what happens when you get born again. You get a born again spirit. Doesn't mean anything else is born again. Your brain can be just as fouled up as it was before you got born again. Unless it gets renewed to the word of God, it's subject to just whatever you, know, you believe. But your spirit has been made yes. brand new. Yes. Amen. And so you, uh, Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies or bring life, make alive your bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Praise the Lord. By presenting himself, Jesus consecrated the rest of us to the Father. 
That's how we're seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's not in, in the atmosphere somewhere. Heavenly places, we've talked about this before, is just a different dimension. We're with Him in that spirit realm. Praise the Lord. Romans 11 and verse 16. If the, if the first fruit be holy, the lump's also holy. I'm not calling you lumpy, but I'm just saying. If he's holy, you're holy. Praise the Lord. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. He's told us he's the root, he's the vine, we're the branches. Whatever he is, we are. I'm telling you, this is good news, church. This is, this is what He wants us to understand, amen, so that we can live a life that is free, that is filled with joy, that isn't anxious, that isn't fearful. Praise God. We are saved from our old life to live in resurrection life. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you've believed, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So the new man is just simply the Lord himself living in us through the Holy Spirit. Look in the mirror, you look the same. Might feel the same, might even think the same. But the truth is... If you are a believer, Christ is in you. That is the new creation. That is the new man that's now living. All right, now I'm going to show you. Genesis chapter 1, or yes, Genesis 1, 1 through 5. You know, when God says, Jesus in the, in the Revelation, I'm the Alpha, the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the author and finisher of your faith, right? Well, we look at it and we think, okay, I'm not so sure I know what that means, but I'm going to try to help you to understand some of what that means at least. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the, the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So in the beginning, do me a favor. If you have a Strong's Concordance, when you get home or sometime, look this up. Strong's Concordance says the word beginning is 7225. It's reshit, the Hebrew word, first fruit. I mean, it... In the first fruit, God created the heaven and the earth. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 15, 23 again. And God called, excuse me, but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Creation is created in Christ. Colossians 1.16 For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him for Him. Right. All right, John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. See, here's the deal. Creation is more than historic. Praise the Lord. In the beginning of time, God created everything in Christ. The worlds, the ages were formed in Him. For without Him was not anything made that was made. Genesis 1 and 2.
The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So in Genesis, it says the earth is formless. It's like an abyss. And that's a time before recorded time, if that makes any sense. When the earth was literally and historically without form, void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And that could also be speaking of the day when we were just like the earth. We hadn't been formed. We hadn't been shaped into the likeness of our creator. We were void. We were empty. Our lives were filled with chaos. Darkness ruled the face of the great deep within us. Without purpose, without destiny, without direction, we were undone, and God was absent from our world. We were dead spiritually. We were nothing. Genesis 1 and 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light and it was good. So he decided to divide the light from the darkness. So one day, our creation began. God arrived. And began to speak into our darkness into our chaos, saying, let there be light. We were dark. We were dead spiritually. He could have said millions of different ways, and did, I'm sure. For everybody, it could be different. But maybe he just said, Jesus, and light flooded into your life. Genesis 1 and 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That word moved is raka, which is another Hebrew word which means to brood, like a hen broods over her chicks or over her egg. Amen? I don't know about anybody, but, you know, my life is not perfect. Surprise, surprise. I know that comes as a shock to all of you. But I'm so thankful for the day that God began to hover and brood over me. I knew there was a God from the time I was a little kid, but I didn't want, have anything to do with Him. I was off doing my own thing, and, you know, He's out there doing His, and I'm doing mine. And that's the way it was for 30 years or more until God began to really brood over me and I began to see light just glimmers that brood over me it's like a chicken sitting on her egg brooding over the egg till it's fully formed and brought to life God was brooding over you long before you responded to him consciously Jesus began to move over the face of your great deep he began to move over the face of your waters. Waters are a type of the spirit. Over your dead spirit. God's spirit began to move. <sighs> and your human spirit, and in your darkness and chaos, God began to breathe his words. Let there be light. No man comes to God except the spirit draws him. God was saying stuff to you long before you ever heard him. But one day, the light came on. Maybe not perfectly, but enough for you to hear. Light be. You were on your way out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Formed in the likeness of your creator. Genesis 1 is spiritually the redemptive work and plan of Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 
before the foundation of the world. We look at it here 2,000 years later, 2,000 years in history and think that's it. No, listen, this happened long before any human being was ever born. God wasn't surprised by Adam. He wasn't shocked by what took place. He had a plan. Yeah. And that plan continues to this day. Yeah. And will until we're all out of here. Yes. Resurrection keeps on happening every single day that people believe in that first fruit. Yeah. They become a part of that harvest. They become a part, amen, of that consecrated field Bye. of God. Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 6. I'm saying this because, you know, the first probably 10 years at least of my being born again, I lived in paranoia most of the time with the help of the church. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Because God had done something tremendous in my life, but, it, but I wasn't perfect. It's just like one of the gals said here this morning, you know, you, you know you're a manifestation of God to some degree and you're supposed to be presenting Him. The truth is, I wasn't always that great at it. I'd have angry, I'd get upset, I'd do, you know, like, like humans, you know. My mind isn't totally renewed, perfectly renewed to the Word of God, although spiritually, I'm perfect. Amen? So I struggled all the time with what, what do I have to do? I mean, what, what, what must I do now to fix this? Nothing. It was done the moment I accepted Jesus. The moment I believed that he was the Son of God and had died for my sins, I became a part of that great harvest. Nobody can take you out of that harvest. God said, no man fuck you out of my hand. That's right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him. Hath, that's past tense. Yep. In him, when? Before the foundation of the world. Back here in Genesis when he was brooding over, he wasn't just brooding over a big vacant lot somewhere. He was brooding over you. He already knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Yes. Yes. He had already chosen you. And you say, well, that's predestination. No, he knew who would respond. Yes. He isn't just saying, I'm picking this one and the rest of y'all go to hell. That isn't the way it works. It's for whosoever will, and he knows who the whosoevers are. Yep. He isn't selecting them. He just knows. Yep. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yes. Praise the Lord. having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now I just defy you to read that and find anything in there about what you're doing. Past, present, or future. Nothing. He determined this. All you did was accept what he has given. That's it. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And the whole earth and most of the church are moaning and groaning for a manifestation of the sons of God. And all, all what we really need to do is open our eyes and see what we already are. What we already have. What He's already done. It is finished. Praise God. In the Passover, we see the lamb. Jesus is slain. Unleavened bread, he's buried. Our sins go with him to the grave, never to return, never to be exposed. And then first fruits, the resurrection. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 now. Remember, the Spirit moved on the face of the deep. On our, the, deep, the depth of us, the deepest part of us, our dead spirit, 
our human spirit. In whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth. After that light began to shine. The gospel of your salvation in whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Mm -hmm. Sealed. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the precious possession unto the praise of His glory. The Spirit did it. The Spirit hovered. The Spirit moved. And did it all. Yes. That same first fruits. In the first fruits, He created it all. Yep. His Word. Yep. Himself. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The first fruits is God. Yes. He that was crucified was God. Yes. He that rose again was God. And now, because of that, we've been created new creatures. Yes. God's children. The children of God. I don't know about you, but I had nothing to do with my birth. Right. I just showed up one day. That's right. The result of someone else's effort. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. You didn't get born again by something you did. You got born again by somebody right. who wanted you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. This this is what and who we celebrate today and every day. We've been created in Christ. He is the first fruit that sanctified the entire harvest. His resurrection is the guarantee, the guarantee of resurrection life for everybody who has ever or will ever believe. We are His creation. Praise the Lord. He spoke us into existence. In the beginning. In your beginning. In my beginning. Created in Christ Jesus. He is the light that was spoken into us. Let there be light. Walk in the light as He's in the light. Heirs. Joint heirs with Jesus Christ. His spiritual twin. He is our everything. Resurrection life means every day is resurrection day. He is risen and we are raised with Him and seated in heavenly places, seated in the spirit realm we had no access to without Him. Praise the Lord. If somebody will get the everybody from downstairs, we're going to do we're going to have communion here, and then we'll wrap up for this morning. I hope that helps you to under, just forever to just lay this to rest yes. and see how available God wants this to be for every living human being. We make it tough. Religion makes it difficult. It gives you hoops to jump through. And of course, listen, I'm telling you, if we ever really get this, you don't have a problem trying to get people to live moral and decent lives. Right. It'll happen eventually. Well, we're trying to get them to live moral and decent lives without ever understanding right. where this all comes from. Right. If it isn't coming from the inside out, it's religion. Right. And that doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help them to make them feel guilty because they're doing what that comes natural to them. Got to understand that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. He loves us. He loves this world. He created this world with this intention in mind that every one of us would become His children. Yes. Amen. That's the whole. Uh, no other reason for for Genesis to even exist if it wasn't that He had an end game. That he had an ultimate plan. Right. And just because we've turned it into religion doesn't mean that's the plan. Right. Because the more you look at the Word, the more the spiritual truth comes alive. 
It's been about us. Amen. So, oh, well, that sounds arrogant. Hey, you know what? God's my father. I mean, I can afford to be arrogant. Right? I mean, if he, if he's the big dude, the, you know, who am I going to be afraid of? What am I going to be, uh, you know, impressed by and intimidated by? If God is for you, who can be against you? That's right. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's uh, let's see uh, if uh, Toby, if, if you and Jason would uh, pass out the offer, uh, the uh, communion. They're back there on that table in the foyer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the more we understand <clears throat> resurrection, the more excited we ought to be about being the people of God. Recognize, listen, if, if this is true, I'm convinced, I'm totally convinced the evidence is overwhelming, then not only... Are you not going to spend eternity separated from God? But you can have healing right now. Yes. You can have prosperity right now. Yes. You can have breakthrough in any area, in every area of your life. You can have deliverance. Nothing shall be withheld from those who love Him and whom He has given Himself for. It isn't just about escaping judgment. It's about having everything that God intended. It's prosperity. Yeah. Everything Jesus came to provide for us is part of the first fruits that has been sanctified now and that we have access to. So all of the all of the financial breakthrough, all of the healing, all of the emotional turmoil, all of the things that every human being struggles with to some degree or another, we've been delivered from. So let's just think about this. The first fruit is the same as all the harvest, right? I mean, obviously you can't get a first fruit and then have the rest of it be something other than whatever that first fruit was, or it wouldn't be the first fruit. So the first fruit is the same as the entire harvest. The first fruit is healing, it's prosperity, it's deliverance, it's total redemption. Whatever He is, we are. As He is, so are we in this world. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, then you have no part in me. What He's saying, we're one. We're all one. Whatever I was, you is. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Perfect English, right? As often as we do this, He said, do it in remembrance of me. We're not doing it to get God to do something. We're doing it to remind us as He is, so are we. So as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of Him, reminding ourselves of who we are and what our, what our realities are. It's not, a, it's not a religious ceremony. It's a reminder. Because we live in a world that's constantly coming against all of this truth. It uses facts, but they're not truth. 
So we have to remind ourselves of what our true identity is, of who we really are in Christ, of what He has done for us. We live our lives in a world that's not our own. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. And if we're not careful, we start playing by this rules, this game, or this world's rules. And it'll only get you then what the world can offer. When we're supposed to be playing by kingdom rules, which means God's in charge, and you can't touch me. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do this, remember that you have healing, that you're already delivered, that you are prospered, that you've been redeemed, that you are totally, unequivocally accepted in love by God. Not based on how good you're going to be this afternoon or how bad you were yesterday, but based on those first fruits that God accepted. Perfect. So it's all perfect. Yes. Created in His image. Created in His likeness. A new creation in Christ. Accepted in the Beloved. Resurrection life. God life is what that is. It's life that doesn't die. It's God life. That's the life you have. He lives, you live also. Or another way you could read that is, you live likewise. Or you live just like Him. How can you live any other way? Right? An apple's an apple. Pear is a pear. Child of God's child of God. First fruit, the whole fruit. So, Paul said, I have received of you of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, and as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. In the beginning, in the first fruits, you were in it. You were there. Hallelujah. And He spoke. And He separated us from the darkness. He said He separated the dark from the light. Amen. And then He said, the end of the first day, it's all good. It's all good. Praise the Lord. It's all good in Jesus. We have been declared righteous, holy, perfect, blameless before the Lord. And we didn't do a thing. Praise the Lord. All we did was say, Ooh, see the light. I've seen some light. God said, Good enough. You're part of the part of the harvest that goes on through eternity. And you can never be taken out of that harvest. You know why? Because it was established before this world ever existed. Yeah. Before you ever did a thing, God had already done it. Yeah. All we're doing is acting out a part. It's just a question of how we're going to play the role. The better we identify with it, the better we know the script, the better the play. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Learn your lines. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. Amen? Amen. Give the resurrected one a hand this morning. Praise God.
Amen, amen. Don't ever let anybody put you down. Don't let religion do it. Don't let the devil do it. God has chosen you and declared you to be righteous, holy, and perfect. And that's your identity. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your families. See you all back here Wednesday if you can be here. God bless you. You're dismissed. In Jesus' name. Oh, that was just for emphasis. Usually I can break the glass. <laughs>